He is home now. He is free. In his final letter to the American people, Dad wrote, I now begin the journey that will lead me into the sunset of my life. This evening, he has arrived. Today, America bids farewell to a hero. Today, Ronald Reagan, 40th President of the United States, begins his final journey to the West. I was always struck by his style and grace, his strength of character. He brought hope to a dispirited world, and he did it with incredible dignity. From all across the nation, Americans of every stripe came to say a final and prayerful goodbye. You did so much for us, Mr. President. We'll never forget you. And in this outpouring of sorrow and reflection, we vividly remember the words of his first day as president. Let us renew our faith and our hope, he said. We have every right to dream heroic dreams. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. President Reagan was a statesman of the first order. Persuasive, disarming, instinctive, he inspired America and the entire world with the clarity of his vision and his sense of direction and purpose. We have lost a great president, a great American, and a great man, and I have lost a dear friend. He inspired America and its allies with renewed faith in their mission of freedom. Ronald Reagan ended the Cold War. He stopped the Soviet advance by building up a military establishment and by developing the concept of strategic defense, which provided a huge incentive for the Soviets to come to the bargaining table. I told him, we don't mistrust each other because of these weapons we have and because we're armed this way. We're armed this way because we mistrust each other. President Reagan was one superb negotiator. Indeed, he could charm the birds out of the trees, but it was his idealism and his endless strength and courage that put America and the world on the road to a lasting peace. We never got tired of listening to him. He always spoke with such ease and good cheer, and that smile, that twinkle in his eye, pure vintage Reagan. President Reagan always had a warm smile and a kind word for everyone, whether a head of state or a junior assistant. 
He was bigger than life. I think Ronald Reagan's greatest imprint was that he pushed so hard for the average guy. He made it easier for Americans everywhere to have and enjoy the great abundance this country has to offer. Reagan, with his style and grace, he made it seem easy. With his compassion and sense of timing, he brought strength of character to the nation and enkindled hope in a darkened world. As the patient, he brought humility to greatness and presided over embracing life to its natural end and dying with dignity, surrounded by love. In the life of any nation, few men forever alter the course of history. Ronald Reagan was one of those men. As we say farewell, his last words as president echo across this nation. If we listen, we will hear him whisper the humble words he used to sum up his revolution. All in all, not bad, not bad at all. While others worried, President Reagan persevered. When others weakened, President Reagan stood tall. When others stepped back, President Reagan stepped forward. And he did it all with great humility, with great charm, and with great humor. Knowing that this moment would come has not made it any easier to see the honor guard and the flag draped before us and to begin America's farewell to President Ronald Reagan. He said goodbye to us in a letter that showed his great courage and love for America. Yet for his friends and for his country, the parting comes only now. And in this national vigil of mourning, we show how much America loved this good man and how greatly we will miss him. I will always be inspired by Ronald Reagan's eternal faith and optimism for America. Even when things were going extremely well, he still felt America's best days were yet to come. In a life of good fortune, he valued above all the gracious gift of his wife, Nancy. President and Mrs. Reagan were the most loving couple you could ever be around. I never knew a couple so close as they were. And she loved him and they loved each other and they set a great example of how a couple can love each other through thick and thin. I can't imagine life without her. I have been truly blessed to have been a friend of Ronald Reagan. I am grateful that our paths crossed and that our lives touched. I shall always remember him with the deepest admiration and affection. And I will always feel honored by the journey that we traveled together in search of better and more peaceful tomorrows for all God's children everywhere. Ronald Reagan belongs to the ages now. But we preferred it when he belonged to us. We know, as he always said, that America's best days are ahead of us. But with Ronald Reagan's passing, some very fine days are behind us. 
and that is worth our tears. Ronald Reagan believed in America, so he made it his shining city on the hill. He believed in freedom, so he acted on behalf of its values and ideals. As his vice president for eight years, I learned more from Ronald Reagan than from anyone I encountered in all my years of public life. I learned kindness. We all did. I also learned courage. The nation did. We will say au revoir today, and I do so with a line from Yeats, who wrote, Think where man's glory most begins and ends, and say, my glory was that I had such friends. this day, and it seemed the heavens were weeping as we paid our farewell to your servant, Ronald Reagan. We have come from sea to shining sea, to this soil which he loved so much, and where his body will remain. You knew my father as governor, as president, but I knew him as dad. I want to tell you a little bit about my dad. Ronald Reagan adopted me into his family in 1945. I was the chosen one. I was the lucky one. In all of his years, he never mentioned that I was adopted either behind my back or in front of me. I was his son. We would swim and we would ride horses, or we'd just watch him cut firewood. We would be in awe of our father. And I can only promise my father this. Dad, when I go, I will go to heaven too. And you and I, and my sister Maureen that went before us, we will dance with the heavenly host of angels before the presence of God, we will do it. Melanoma and Alzheimer's free. When I was a child, he took me out into a field at our ranch after one of the Malibu fires had swept through. I was very small and the field looked huge and lifeless, but he bent down and showed me how tiny new green shoots were peeking up out of the ashes just weeks after the fire had come through. You see, he said, new life always comes out of death. It looks like nothing could ever grow in this field again, but things do. I don't know why Alzheimer's was allowed to steal so much of my father, but I know that at his last moment, when he opened his eyes, eyes that had not opened for many, many days, and looked at my mother, he showed us that neither disease nor death can conquer love. Honest, compassionate, graceful, brave. He was the most plainly decent man you could ever hope to meet. Big as he was, he never tried to make anyone feel small. Powerful as he became, he never took advantage of those who were weaker. Strength, he believed, was never more admirable than when it was applied with restraint. And so he is home, he is free. Those of us who knew him well will have no trouble imagining his paradise. Golden fields will spread beneath the blue dome of a western sky. Live oaks will shadow the rolling hillsides. And someplace, flowing from years long past, a river will wind towards the sea. Across those fields, he will ride a gray mare he calls Nancy D. They will sail over jumps he has built with his own hands. He will let the river carry him over the shining stones. He will rest 
in the shade of the trees. Our cares are no longer his. We meet him now only in memory, but we will join him soon enough, all of us, when we are home, when we are free. I always knew how deeply Ronnie loved America and the American people, but I was so touched to see how much they loved him in return. People of all races and from different countries, people we knew and thousands we'd never met, all anxious to reach out to Ronnie one last time. Our family's sense of loss is immense and is difficult to put into words. From being governor of the largest state in the country to being president of the United States for eight years, he somehow remained the same wonderful man. I know that for America, there will always be a bright dawn ahead. May God always bless you. <laughs>